meeting to order. It's 6.01, Tuesday, August 23rd, 2022. The meeting is being taped by Area 58. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have a motion to approve the agenda as written. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then I would need a motion to approve our selectmen meeting minutes from September 14th, 2021 and June 14th, 2022. I'll make a motion to approve the regular session meeting minutes from September 14th, 2021 and the regular session meeting minutes from June 14th, 2022. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Jonathan. All right, I need to affirm approval of the following commitments and warrants. Uh, payroll warrant number 15 for $234,000, I'm gonna try this for good time. <laughs> English is my first language too. Yeah. I'll try that. Payroll warrant number 15 for $234,401.68. Vendor warrant number 16 for $309,149.72. Withholding warrant number 17 for $77,280.43. Our ambulance commitment from 8122 to 8722 for $36,370.01. Our ambulance commitment from 8822 to 81422 for $48,089. Oh, you nailed it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, I move to affirm payment to the following selectmen bills. CNA surety direct bill, uh, bond Linda McCarthy, tra tax collector, $230.99. Cushman insurance bond, L. McCarthy treasurer, $525. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I move to approve the following warrants. The withholding warrant, number 17, for a whopping 13 cents. And a vendor warrant, number 18, for $33,001.61. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And there are no uh, selectmen bills at this time. So we We're doing so good. Pass Aye. over that. There you go. Saving money. All right. Uh, appointment. Is anybody here for that? Ken Cordy? Yeah. You're here. Yeah. We'll here. start with that. You're looking for a one-day liquor license and live entertainment permit. Yes. Can we move that post? What? So we need to move the post. I know. Well, I mean, I don't know if we could do that. The <laughs> building might fall down. I called the post to show my deal a little bit late. She called me, but I can answer almost any question she can answer. Okay. Sure. What, do you want to tell us a little bit about the event? The event is uh, a chicken barbecue with our lady. I did. Yeah, come on. It's all good. I gotta get the brain thing. It's hey, I do it too. Yeah, you know, but it's not leaving like Parish. I've been saying it for so many years, but it's, it's, it's a different stand now. But it's still got, you know, got two And uh, we, we uh, put a chicken barbecue on. Mm -hmm. And we're looking for a name to tame the permit for uh, Friday night. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Now we can copy that and uh, I'll call you back. I'll be back. That's all. It's fine, I'll look at you. Okay, so I'm going to do it. I know, I know. All right. Take out the selection around town hall. Thank you. You're the best. Thank you. Why are you confused about it? Road openings? Yeah. Yeah, so. I know, I'm just waiting for Alex to sign her. No, I just, that's, that's fine. Yeah, there's two, yeah. What's the third one for? That's entertainment, this is what you're doing. The career oh, two. entertainment. Yep. <laughs> okay, next are road openings. Openings. Review. Oh, okay. I don't think it matters, but. All of these? Uh, or is there more than one here? Entertainment permits written to Lady of Lake. Well, you have for us. Remember it? No, 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 I know. I don't, I don't think it matters. It doesn't matter to me. But. Both of yes. Both the same, right? That's what I was confused by. That's all. Yeah. That's that one. Love it. Four and 40. Yeah, that makes sense. Is this yours or mine? Yours. I didn't take anything on mine, Marty. Yeah. So we have two road openings for four and forty. McClelland. Yep. Road. Yep. For Eversource for gas maintenance. I believe everybody is okay in it. Mm -hmm. Building inspector, yes. Police, one detail. Highway, water, and conservation are all okay. So I would need a motion for those two. I'll make a motion to uh, okay the road openings for. Four McClelland and 40 McClelland. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Discussion on recycling fees. Okay. Is there anybody here who wants to speak on that? Why is that on there? It has been $50 for the past. Six years. Sorry. Six yes. Oh. So you want to increase it? Is that what we're talking? Where where are we going with this? Um, you might already mention we could keep it the same. What are the other towns around us? Are we comparable? Because last year we did this whole thing where we started raising our fees because we were really bottom of the barrel. Yeah. The so we're gonna talk to the audience. We gotta make sure that we can sorry. hear and make sure that we are uh, to the form we're not in violating the progress rule of board. So that is uh then call our town count. No, Sandy oh, Sandy Sandy Sorry, they need on my mind. I need on my mind right now. Bye, Linda, thank you for your eight hundred years of service. That is Sandra Nolan, Town County. Okay. So we talk about this every year, every year we meet, we go over the cash flow. Um, we did better this year on recycling for the net cash. Mm -hmm. Under the, if the first section is just the, um, it's just the recycling costs and revenues. So you have receipts from recycling fees, receipt from the sale of the recycling, recyclables, and then you have the recycling center of, expenses, both the wages and the expenditures, and you have the recycling office expenses, the wages and the um, expenses. And we came up pretty well this year. We've had years that we have lost money. Um, last year we made about 8,000. This year we're up on that. Um, my recommendation at this time, because we are looking into the whole solid waste issue um, with the rising cost of the disposal of our waste is to keep the recycling fee at the $50. Um, we did try lowering it for a while. Um, we have had to come back up to the $50 to see some type of a, um, a savings in our team earnings and to be able to support the recycling program. 
So um, I did talk with Sue Johnston, and she's in agreement. We'd like to see you keep the recycling fee at $50 per household. I don't understand why the numbers are all over the place. Depending on how many people. The number of households has stayed consistent. The number of percentage collected in the first year has stayed consistent. The approximate number of residents paid has stayed consistent. So, why did the recycling center expenses go down so much? They were consistently around 115, 113, 117, now we're at 84. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the issues is wages. Okay. So, um, we have a recycling driver. Yeah. And that driver has had been out for a while. When the driver is out, um, the highway department picks up some of that responsibility. But it's not and trans- it doesn't necessarily, it, it does sometimes get charged off, but I don't know if there was anything else as far as the expenses that may have gone down. Yeah, I mean, you look at it and you see $20,000 less in receipts from the fee, but our net cash is up. Right. $18,000, $16,000, interesting. I'm fine with keeping it at $50. I just, I need to get my head into this. I mean, trash collection disposable obviously has gone right. up. Sure Unfortunately, it's... our um, the girl from the recycling center, the recycling coordinator, she couldn't be here tonight, right. and Absolutely. she would probably have more of those answers. Yep. I mean, I expect obviously the trash collection disposal is going to go up because of the cost of fuel, which it did considerably. Yes. And the cost of recycling. Right. No longer. Yep. Yeah. And the fact that we're doing single stream as well, mm -hmm. that affects, um, because we can sell the corrugated cardboard, but because we do single stream, we put that in with it. Yeah. yeah. We put, people put their corrugated in with the single stream. So we're not collecting much of, as much of that at the center separately. Okay. And, well, can I speak? Yeah. Cor yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. We're one of the shining stars around here as far as recycling numbers go, as far as participation, we, we do as far well, as how yes. we do. I remember. Yeah. For drop off. Right. Right. Because right. we're one of the few people that actually, actually still have has drop off. So right. that's kind of a little misleading. Yeah. Yeah. We had, um, we did have a program where they went out, they were checking our recycling. And, we, it was a grant through the state to two people would go out, and we actually went through flying colors. We had very with clean recyclables. Yeah. So a lot of, not a lot of other things thrown in with our recycling. So yes, as a whole, we do well. Yeah, I, I think where we're we're getting close to redoing our our, our uh, contract with, with waste. I don't think it makes sense to shake the apple cart up too much here. That's how I'm feeling. And I don't think it would make sense to try to raise the amount. Correct. And truthfully, I don't think that we can lower it because I think that would just see a loss in the retained room. Yeah, I would agree. I, yeah, I'm I would, comfortable lowering it. That's right. I would shoot to keep it at 50. I'll make a motion to keep the recycling fee at $50. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Sandy. Oh, all right, reappoint Tanya Massa to the holidays in Halifax. We had that yeah, she was here last little time. bit of a snafu, yeah, and then we got the emails and all yeah, that. Yeah. So we just need a motion for her. Uh, I'll do it, sure. I'll make a motion to appoint Tanya Massa uh, to the holidays in Halifax committee for the term ending June 30th, 2023. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Nice. FMLA approval. We just need a motion to approve. <laughs> Is there a motion to approve the FMLA request? I'll make a motion to approve the FMLA request as submitted. Um, I'll second that. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 
The Historic District Commission is looking for us to approve Kevin Shea and Jay. Shea. Thank you, because I was totally going to say no. Um, term to expire June 30th, 2024 for Jay, and term to expire June 30th, 2025 for Kevin. So this will make it so they can hold a meeting and. Okay. Yeah. Is there a motion? Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion to appoint Jay Boucher uh, to the um, Historical District Commission for the term expiring June 30th, 2024, and Kevin Shea to the Historical District Commission term to expire June 30th, 2025. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we have vacation hours <clears throat> that we have to approve for carryover. One was for Bill Lindsay. We should probably do these individually, so. Is there a motion? These are obvious, to... sorry. Go ahead. These are obviously, they came through Bill, right? He's fine with it? Yeah. 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 This was back on that issue yeah. that we were having. Yeah, so. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the vacation carryover. Um, Dave Hathaway. For Dave Hathaway and the Water Department. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I will make a motion to approve the vacation carryover um, from Ms. McSherry uh, for 40 hours for use by the end of fiscal 22. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. To approve having a citizen at large appointments from Pencom. I can speak to you. You want to speak to this one? That'd be great. Um, so, the personnel advisory board, when we formed it, we um, decided that we were going to have two citizens at large, one of which, or, or two of which, um, have gone through, actually, I think we have more than two now, the old talent bank process. Um, speaking with town council, we didn't define how those two citizens at large would be appointed. Um, so his recommendation was to have a vote at our committee or at our board and then finance committee that we'd be okay with the board of selectmen appointing one citizen at large and the finance committee appointing one citizen at large. Okay. So currently it's um, one board of selectmen member, myself, and two folks from the finance committee. But when we when we formed the board, it was going to be a total of five people. Right. So you're going to have one from the BOS and one from the Fencon. One citizen at large appointed by each board yeah. committee. Board committee. That makes sense to me. Sure. Sorry, motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, have the board of selectmen uh, appoint one member of the personnel advisory board, and the finance committee appoint uh, another member, both citizens at large, for the personnel advisory board. Can I second it? It's my board. I'll second it. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, <laughs> Sue sent us a memo. Please appoint William Russell, 705 Old Plymouth Street. As an election worker, I realize the appointments have already been made, but I need to have more on the list. As people express interest, I will bring them forward. Thanks, Sue. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Can I ask real quick, Sue, how are you with workers? Do we need more? No, not Susan, sure. Susan, sorry. Susan Wallace, town clerk. I'm not really sure. I'm waiting to get back from the call of availability. So we don't need to put the call out just yet? We need more folks? Okay. We're all set for that right Awesome. Cool. Request from the Halifax. Uh, Congregational Church for the use of the Town Hall parking lot in Town Green. So, did you check the calendar? Oh, yeah, it's all set. It's um, They're looking for permission to use the town parking lot on Saturday, September 10th, with a rain date of September 17th for the annual flea market fundraising event. Both dates are open if there was a rain date. 
Okay. Yeah. We do. We haven't. But the two rows of parking spaces closest to the church, in front of the church shed, uh, will be utilized for vendors, crafters, and the entire area on all four sides will be blocked off using town cones and keep it separated from parking spaces. I would also like to reserve the town green area on the side of the town hall facing the town library as a backup to the parking lot area, should the parking lot. They want to park on the grass? Yeah, so what they want to do is they really want to use the parking lot because last year when they went to use the track, they over here, it was really wet. They had feet got wet, their pants got wet, everything got wet. Plus, now and put all their stuff over there. It's just like so long, use the parking lot. Yeah. But she said, if you guys don't want to use the parking lot, then they'll use the town break. Okay. I see what you're saying, man. Yeah, I'm get approved then. I gotcha. Previous meetings haven't we discussed not using the time green anymore? Yeah, we didn't do anything with it yet. All right. So, um, Jonathan, do you have anything? I, I, I'm fine with that. I know this has been kind of a tradition. Um, not that that says it's okay, but um, I have no problem. If we're not using the lot. I don't think it's going to cause any sort of issues. Um, it's a flea market, so. Uh, I would be okay with, with uh, giving this the thumbs up. I'm sorry, can I um, just, just say who you are? Yep. Yeah. Jean Gallant, Library Director. So on that particular date, we also have the um, over there. I'm, I'm just wondering where all the parking is going to be because we have a Boy Scout event um, on that date, and they're going to set up. Um, it's kind of like a recruitment for. Boy Scouts, and I think, although I'm meeting with the um, friends of the library, I think we're also going to have the book sale that day. So I, I just wanted to throw that out that parking mm -hmm. might be an issue. Yeah, where are they going to put the cars if they're going to use the parking lot? Well, they have two rows of parking spaces closest to the church. The rows. Yeah. Far that away. That's right. So that way. The way. They'll use that. For the closest to the church, so and then these would be open for parking. So yeah. those two. Oh yeah, there's always soccer. Yeah, that'll there's be a, that'll be really cool on Saturday. Yeah. I think that's actually opening Saturday for soccer. Well, we have the we have the Boy Scouts Club Saturday. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
They won't. But oh, it's just like open construction area things out gotcha. there. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying now. I'm just, I, I'm fine. Okay, I'll make a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the Halifax Congregational Church to use the two rows of parking spaces closest to the church for their craft fair, uh, flea market slash craft fair. Um, and then the rest of this says, I would also like to reserve the town green area on the side of the town hall face in the town library as a backup to the parking lot area should the parking lot request be denied. So I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the parking lot request. And accepting the rain date of September 17th as long as Pam checks the calendar. Contingent on, Contingent on Pam calendar. checking the calendar for a rain date of September 17th. Yeah, I'm, I'm for this event, so yeah, I'm second in line. <coughs> Aye. Aye. Okay, and then we got a request for them to place a sign on the town hall lawn. I think really just needs to go through, Jim. Yep, I agree. Uh, Jim already approved the, the sign itself. Okay. But uh, for use on their lot, uh, the, the problem they're having is that it falls over. Andy, we're actually going to talk about there now. Something to that? Yes. Yeah. They had put the, the sign and then she put it on the hill to see if it would fall over the wind and all that. So she wanted to put it on the town lawn two weeks prior to an event. Now, um, they don't say it's good to pull the sign, but it just, just to let you guys know, but it was, you know, it's a title of you not see the little pull the sign from it to be on two weeks prior before an event and take it off the day of the event once it's over. So the way it's situated, if it's up on the hill, it might tip over in They can't weigh it down. I Hard on me. What do you think, Celia? Um, obviously, I'd I'd like to uh, support the event here, but um, it just it just opens up a can of worms with yep. with Town Green. I agree. It opens up a can of worms with Town Green. And, so, um, I agree with you. As much. As much as I think almost everybody wants to help this situation out, um, I think once you set a precedent, you set a precedent. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if we can put this right there on the town green. Maybe uh, Jim can help them figure out how to make it work on their property or weigh it down or whatever the situation, since he's already approved it for their use. Be great if he could be helpful sure. in any way. I'll talk to him to find them a comfortable alternative. Okay. If they need help during the week, I'll try to help them figure something on their property. Uh, town hall office hours, Marty. Uh, all right. I'm sure you're all aware that the town hall has some discrepancy in when building or when the building would open when it's closed. Um, for example, um, the clerk is open from 8 to 4 Monday to Thursday. Treasurer Collector is open 7 to 4 Monday to Thursday. Um, some offices are here on Friday but not open. Some offices are closed. The building is open 8 to 4 Monday to Thursday. Friday they are here but they're not officially open. Health department is open 8 to 12 by appointment. Our office, the selectman's office, is open, but not advertised. Uh, the planning board office is open 9 to 2, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. The zoning office is open 9 to 2, Monday to Wednesday. And it kind of keeps going on like that. The veterans agent is essentially by appointment only um, and one Monday night. Uh, and I think that 
as a professional organization, standardizing those hours of service between X and X will help residents be able to navigate a sometimes complicated bureaucratic system used to get the things that they need to get done. That would be my re recommendation, is to standardize office hours from time to time. Um, yeah, seven to three sometimes. Say sometimes. sometimes. Yeah. Seems like there's a lot of asterisks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, do you have a recommendation? Just set a standard time for the office to go. Do you have eight to four? I mean, the, the grand connector here is eight to four. Um, that seems to be the vast majority. Friday, that one might be a little more difficult. And I would Why are they close Friday? David Moss from six and tell that. I would say if you're going to have one office available on Friday, didn't have them all open. Like a lot of the offices are open half days. Um, keeping it consistent. I can't honestly think of a reason to close it for Friday unless we're budgetarily constricted. Are we? Can we talk here? Yes, we can. Are we? Have we looked at the numbers of what this is going to cost it's us? It's going to cost more, but. I think one of the problems was it was never budgeted appropriately for this kind of service delivery. It was never budgeted for an employee working a full-time hour and 36 hours, and, and part-time employees working 19, 19 and a half, whatever was the requirement. It was always based on availability and, and that, and I think we should progress towards a consistent time and a consistent system of work. I agree with the sentiment. I just would like to do a little more research on the yeah. financial implications first. Yeah. yeah, I would make that incumbent upon the department heads to solve. Uh, you did not budget for it. Um, how are you going to make it work? And that's something I can happily kind of arrange. But inconsistency of delivery is the is what? Oh, I agree. With, I, I absolutely agree with the intent. I just don't want to rush headstrong into something, not yep. it's doing our to, research first. It's going to increase all of the offices. Yep. Uh, I mean, honestly, it shouldn't have, but the budget, in my opinion, could have been done differently to have this a normalized. So I would have to figure out exactly how many hours Additionally, each of the offices are going to have to commit to. I mean, that's what it boils down to. Yeah. yeah. And if we did it right, eight to four, and that's Monday to Thursday, it's eight hours times four, and then another four hours. So you get three or 36. Yeah. I know, well, I shouldn't say I know. I would assume that offices with multiple personnel could shift some schedules around to try to keep us out of overtime and everything. To keep it to at 36? Yeah. That should be the bare minimum of vaccine. Yeah. Can we float it by department heads and, and throw this spitball that to them and say, this is what we're thinking of doing. Can you use creative ways to try to make this staffing happen with you minimal? Do you do however you want to do it. I mean, I'm thinking. I think that's probably a logical step. I'm thinking like eight to four, Monday to Thursday, eight to noon Fridays. But we'll have to talk about the budget. Let's look at the money. I mean, obviously, we need to have a building most accessible to residents okay. and most consistent, and all the departments consistent. We don't need somebody that comes in here on a Thursday and they need to go to Board of Health here and here, and they realize, oh, now I have to come back because that office isn't open, but I was here for the Board of Health. So, I, for one, can tell you that every time I remember I have to go to the town clerk or the tax collector, it's always a Friday. <laughs> but that said, and I agree with that sentiment, we also need to check with the people that, all right, here, we're going to standardize these, but this is how much it's extra it's going to cost the right. town. And do they want to make that trade off as this is how you're going to get hit with your wallet and this is how the services are going to change? Or we need to find different ways to do it. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's part of it. I think there's going to be a happy medium there where we sure. can offer more standardized hours, maybe not jump exactly to that yet, but also work with the department heads and then further along try to figure out how to budget this accordingly from here on up. It's, I think it's going to be a couple step process. So yeah, it's I agree. not going to be a we're going to change this tomorrow. Yeah, but. yeah, definitely worth looking into. So, should we 
keep this on the agenda for our meeting in two weeks. Yes. And we'll do some research between that and then. Yeah, Mr. Gold, I think you please reach out to the department heads. Are you guys going to the eight to four? Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, to start. Yeah. So start say, and see what, what this feedback is, we get. This is what we're thinking. Let's uh, collectively brainstorm how to get there. Who's in Thank you. All right. Policies. Yeah, the personnel policy, they're back in the wires. Is there a hand up for this? I didn't put out the seven <laughs> page thing. It's the one that, the one that, I, that I sent you, and then uh, it's a lot. Um, so I did hear back from council that the adopting of policy is what is well within the purview of the board of selectmen and FinCom in this town because that is what the bylaw specifically says. Mm -hmm. Having a hiring policy, having a personnel policy is what you can set and how you can set it. Um, and the one that I sent out is the one that was approved by council. So it would need to be like you go over the fine tooth comb to make sure that it, it, it meets with what your um, ideas are moving forward and then send back that approved from you to FinCom as well before you can adopt it as a policy, not a bylaw. Okay. So should okay. we figure out when the next FinCom meeting is and possibly do a joint meeting with them so that we can get that moving? I would be happy to send them a copy yeah. for their review okay. before their next meeting. And then maybe the meeting after, after that, that have the joint meeting to discuss Perfect. adopting. Again, that would be just for standardization of process. Yep. How we do the hiring, how we do the interviewing, how we do all that so we're not getting in legal trouble by doing something right. incorrectly, even if done accidentally or with no amounts or illegal. Can we wrap like onboarding procedures and dismissal procedures in that, please? Onboarding procedures, uh, all of that are very good. Sounds good to me. Yeah, is there something else specific that you would like to add in there, as long as it is not in conflict with a bylaw or a need to go to town meeting? It can be added. Policies can be added. Uh, okay. Great. Okay. So we are at the end. We need a motion to go into executive session to discuss contract negotiations with the fire chief as discussing strategy with respect to collective bargaining and open meeting may have detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the town. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Jonathan? Uh, yes. Else? Yes. And I'll be yes. So, we're resuming Board of Selectmen meeting at 8.06. I'm looking for a motion to approve the fire chief contract as negotiated this evening in executive session with him signing. Okay, with him signing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And motion to adjourn. Second. No passage. Oh, you. so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.